Hi, welcome to the free virtual assistant training. And now we will continue to understand the basics in the VA industry. My name is Desiree, and this will be the second part of the second lesson in which we will be discussing how a VA works with a client. And in this part, we will be talking more about the compensation and benefits that you will be receiving while working for your client. Now let's talk about holidays. According to officialgazette.gov.ph, there are 11 regular holidays here in the Philippines. It is a very common thing for the clients to say that the Philippines has a lot of holidays because every now and then we will inform them that, oh, your VAs will not be able to work on these days because it's a Philippine holiday. So they, they're, the clients are not really complaining. They're just saying that compared to their countries, Philippines has a lot more holidays. And in this case, the regular holidays, there are 11 here in the Philippines. And there are eight special non-working holidays, which are these listed right over here. Now, some companies and agencies follow these Philippine non-working holidays. So if they follow these holidays, they will let your clients know or they will provide your clients with a calendar and let them know that these are all the Philippine holidays in which your VA will not be working. So you will not be working, but you will be paid. But if you're working as an independent contractor to an agency or directly with a client or through freelancing, and if it was not indicated in your contract, you need to work during these holidays, but with no extra pay or no work, but with no pay. So like I mentioned, you have to check everything on your contract and you need to specify everything in there that will enclose all of the details. And if you don't want to work on a specific holiday, then you have to let your client know about that. Now, if it was not included in your contract, then you really have to go to work during these holidays and you will not receive any extra pay as compared to Philippine employers that, that if it's a holiday, they will give you an extra like 20 or 30% pay but of course you can ask your client if it's okay that you will not work during these holidays or during these days and you have to wait for the approval of your client but you have to know that if it wasn't specified on your contract then you will receive no pay for the day that you will not be working so yeah no work no pay some clients will not work on global holidays and may or may not ask you to do the same so for example during christmas or new year season your clients may not be working because their target clients are also not working so they will not be working as well again if it's not on your contract that you will not be working on these said holidays then you really have to work unless your client will say that it's okay for you not to go to work because it's a holiday and you'll have to make sure that your client will say that you will still be paid during these holidays that she asked you not to go to work now let's talk about leaves specifically the vacation and sick leaves some companies agencies and clients will give you leave credits as soon as you become a regular employee so like if they will say in a year they will give their va seven vacation leave credits and seven sick leave credits so these are two different types of credits so if that's the case if we divide it by 12 you will earn 0.58 0.58 monthly credits that you will have to keep earning for the duration that you will be staying in the company. So let's say that you are already eight months working in the company and you had been a regular employee after six months. So eight months times the 0.58 monthly credits. So after eight months in the company, you now have 4.64 leave credits. That means that you can plot your vacation leave for four and a half days. You will still receive pay for these vacation days. That will be the same computation for sick leaves. Now, if you're an independent contractor to an agency or directly to a client, if leaves are not included in your contract, then you will simply have no work and no pay. Now let's talk about salary. This is the most important part of working in my opinion. I would not have endured so much working for this amount of time if not for salary. Now there are three salary schemes that we will be talking in this lesson. First is monthly rates. So some companies, agencies, and clients will contract you for a fixed monthly income. 
So let's say, for example, that for a full-time general VA, you will be paid 800 US dollars. Full-time work will be 40 hours per week or 160 hours per month. And part-time will be half of that, which will be 20 hours per week or 80 hours per month. The second type of salary rate is hourly. So some companies, agencies, and clients will contract you with hourly rates for your services. So for example, if your client will get you as a social media manager and you will be working 20 hours per week, but you will be paid $8 an hour, then if you multiply $8 by the number of hours you work in a week, it will be $160 or 8,900 pesos per week. If you will be working on a specific project, you may be receiving package rates. So you will complete the project with no specified number of hours per day or week, but a schedule of completion. So for example, you will be asked to create a website for a company. So that is your package. Your package is to complete the creation of a website. So for that example, let's say it'll be $1,000 for website development with five functioning pages. There will be no specified number of hours you have to work, but rather a specific deadline. This website will be available and this will be the overall amount that the client will have to pay you, which is $1,000 in our example. There are different types of remittances for you to receive your salary. They might be sending it directly to your bank, especially if you're working with a Philippine VA agency or a company. They might even offer to send it to your GCash, which I really don't recommend, but they might also be just directly depositing it to your bank account, which is great because most of the time you will receive it within 24 to 48 hours. Another way is for the clients to send it to you via WISE or formerly transfer WISE. So what will happen is that from their international bank account, they will ask for your local bank account, which will now be kind of like a direct bank deposit. It's just that the amount is coming from their international bank accounts and they are using WISE in order to send you the money. And this may take 24 business hours for you to receive your money. You'll have to provide your client like with the account name, account number, and the Swiss number or something like that. Now, another way is for them to send it to you via PayPal in which you can then integrate your card so you can transfer the amount from PayPal into your local bank account for you to withdraw. There are a lot of other remittance methods, but these are just some of the examples and the most common ways to remit your salaries as of the moment. As a part of your compensation and benefits, let's go ahead and discuss different government contributions. First is SSS or Social Security System. SSS administers social security protection to workers in the private sector and provides replacement income for workers in times of death, disability, sickness, maternity, and old age. If you're pregnant during your maternity leave, SSS will provide maternity benefit. You can also take a loan like a salary loan from SSS. Another thing is PhilHealth, our Philippine health insurance, which delivers universal health insurance coverage for all Filipinos. So when you have to visit a hospital for inpatient or outpatient, or you need to be hospitalized, you will need your PhilHealth details for that. This is our health insurance. Pag-ibig or pagtutulungan sa kinabukasan, ikaw, banko, industriya at gobyerno. It provides housing loans, savings, and other financial services to Filipino workers. So you might be familiar with pag-ibig, especially if you're trying to take out a loan for housing. You only have to pay for like equity for a certain amount of time and the rest of the amount that you have to pay for your house. You can loan the amount from Pag-ibig and then you can pay for the said amount monthly for a span of time like 10 years, 20 years, and 30 years and so on. And another contribution that you'll have to pay for as an employee is BIR or the Bureau of Internal Revenue which is mandated by law to assess and collect all national internal revenue taxes, fees, and charges. So you'll have to pay a percentage of your salary to BIR to pay for taxes, and it would depend how much tax should you be paying on your salary grade. Now, who will be paying for these government contributions? If you are working as an employee for like an agency or a company, the employer will pay a certain fraction of the amount that you'll have to pay for for SSS, PhilHealth, and Pag-ibig. 
on your payslip, you might see that there are certain deductions that will go to these three contributions. And if you compare that to the actual amount that you're seeing on your contributions on SSS by EBIG and PhilHealth, the amount you're paying for is less than the actual contributions because again, a part of that contribution was paid by the employer. If you are an independent contractor, most of the time your company will not be providing you with these government contributions and benefits. What that means is that you'll have to pay for these yourself. You will have to manually pay or go online to pay for your SSS, PhilHealth, and the EB contributions. And you will have to pay all of these by yourself. And for the taxes, you have to file for this yourself. Let's go ahead and talk about bonuses and commissions. Again, these have to be indicated first during your contract signing, but these commissions are the percentage of money that you will receive upon completing specific tasks. So let's say, for example, that your client is offering some type of a service. Now, if you help in getting your clients his or her own client and your client's clients will now sign up for your client services that are worth 500 US dollars. So if it was indicated in your contract that your client will give you 5% of commission rate per successful conversion, since you have three successful conversions, it will now be $500 multiplied by 0 0.05 for your commission rate, which will be $25 per successful conversion. And since you have converted three clients, so that's $25 multiplied by three clients, it will now be 75 US dollars, which will roughly be 4,175 pesos as your commission. This will be added on top of your regular salary. This is just a commission added. Another example is that if your client has products that you are helping to market, you are helping to sell online. And if in your contract, your client said that you will be able to receive 3% commission rate per successful purchase of that product. So we'll get the commission rate by multiplying the amount of the product, which is $150 multiplied by your commission rate 0 0.03, which will now be $4 and 50 cents. And since you have converted five clients, as an example, there are five clients who purchased the product. So that will be $22 and 50 cents, which will now be a total of 1,250 pesos for your commission for those successful conversions or sales. Now, bonuses are bonus base that your client or employer calculates based on predetermined metrics, regardless of the sales. So bonuses are not the same with commissions because for commissions, you have to have a sale or a conversion, but for bonuses, your client will just give those to you no matter the number of the sales. So say, for example, example, if your VA company will say that, okay, if you're a hundred percent with your attendance for this month, I'll give you a $10 bonus. So you'll just have to pass through the metrics in order to get that specific bonus. Sometimes during holidays, your clients might also give you some type of a bonus. Also, I've experienced clients sending an iPad to her VA. Aside from iPad, I also know of a VA who received a MacBook as her bonus. There are also clients who will send their VAs like a birthday cake during their birthdays or GCs or just, you know, plain cash that they add on top of their salaries. And I also have experienced VAs receiving the actual products that her clients are offering. So, so the products of her clients are different types of sandals and she actually received 10 different types of high end sandals that she's helping her clients in selling. It's really great and inspiring and motivational to be able to witness these clients sending these types of bonuses to their VAs. Again, this all just really depends on the client, but I'm telling you that there are a lot of generous clients out there who might give you more than what you actually need and who might pay you more than what is in your contract. I'm rooting for you guys. I hope that this positivity will reflect and I'm hoping that you will also receive this positivity.
showering it over to you guys. All righty. So that is the end of our training. We have discussed how a VA works with a client starting from the contract, the onboarding, the deployment and everything else. You can, of course, rewatch this training. If you got information overload, if there are a lot of things that you have to absorb, please go ahead and rewatch this training. And we actually have a training portal for you guys for a more organized and guided training and if there are documents and resources that we want to share with you guys you can of course go ahead and download those just sign up for the free va training portal at www.taskdelegates.com forward slash free dash va dash training you can also get the link on the description box below for you to sign up let's get connected you can find us at task delegates to find our social accounts and our YouTube account. Please go ahead and comment down below if you have any questions or if there's something else that you would like to clarify. Please don't be shy. Like this video and share it to someone who think is interested in getting this training so they can become a virtual assistant too. Commenting on our socials and in this video would help boost our engagement so that we can reach other people who would love to become a virtual assistant also. And that is all for the second lesson of this module up next will be the third lesson which will be talking more about the different terminologies that you may come across as a virtual assistant and we'll have to understand those in order for us to learn and understand better the next following lessons i'll see you in the next one bye